My name is Brady Pietzi, actress, singer, and all-around fabulous person. I'm also a trans woman trying to make sense of where our whanau is at in these exciting but challenging times. So, I'm going on a journey of discovery to record the unrecorded history of trans people of all generations. I want to know what their struggles were, how they overcame them, and how one generation built something beautiful and valuable for the next. Today, I'm meeting Felicia, a fierce champion of the Pacifica trans community. It's a community that suffered prejudice and discrimination since back in colonial times. I'm a generation of lots of survivors. I refer to it as the lost generation because so many people my age only lived to their late 20s or early 30s as a result of many things, mental health, alcohol, addiction, violent relationships, prejudice, suicide. Felicia's generation came of age in the 80s and 90s. Through your childhood, where was it with the point where you may have thought of yourself as being different to the other children that are, were around you? On my first day of school, I remember distinctly arriving at the toilet, being confronted by the fact that boys were going to one side and girls were going to the other side. So I kind of thought, oh, I'll just follow the girls because I'm a girl. In that very moment of following the girls, a teacher, she grabbed me by the scuff of my collar and yanked me back and said, you don't go in there, you're not a uh, girl, you're a boy. And I was distraught. But that's kind of the first inklings as a kid that I started to recognize how I felt inside was not necessarily how people viewed me externally. Back then, nobody knew what a trans child was even understanding myself, because I never saw my reflection in anyone else. There was no one around my peripheral that looked like me. And so I was constantly being labeled as a gay boy, which didn't fit with me. But as a schoolgirl, one chance encounter transformed her life. My mum had sent me up to get something from the shop. And then when I came back down, I could hear the whistle blowing in the background. And then I sort of stood there and I watched these beautiful gazelles prancing on the netball court. They were athletic, they were golden, they were coloured. It was so fast, so beautifully choreographed. And then in the midst of the breaks, one of the girls just said, hi, sister. And I, <laughs> they're like, come, come, come. And I realised, I was just like, wow, these women are just like me. What happened once you were living your life as a trans person? One of my friends back in the day, they all decided that they were going to put makeup on me for the first time. And then I had no high heels. I remember just wearing this cutout tube and I didn't have very long hair back then. So I tied a um, lava lava in my, my hair and made it like a turban. And then I went to a nightclub with them and I remember dancing, dancing. I turned around and my first cousin, she was standing there at the nightclub and obviously she shouldn't have recognised me because they did my makeup very draggy. And I remember just turning straight back and then I was like shimmy shimmied and then I left and then took off home. And then I questioned myself. But that's the only time that I felt that I questioned myself. And then from there I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm moving on. I'm not going to have anyone stare at me and look at me. Even though that was a defining moment for me, some people said, oh, but that was your coming out of the closet. And the only thing that I should have ever come out of and recognised that is coming out of my mum. That's my coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and from then on, I was just like, I'm living my life without any apology, without any fear of feeling that I need to hide who I am. And from that moment on, Felicia's journey, where Felicia was Felicia, and I never looked back. So at the age of 15, on K Road was New Zealand's largest gay nightclub. 
and it was called DTMs, Don't Tell Mama. And my first cousin, he was a head bouncer at the nightclub. So I got exposed to seeing some of the most beautiful trans women who were just like wearing the latest fashion and they would always have these most gorgeous men. I automatically assumed like, that's where you go to find, you know, your perfect husband, basically. Eventually I worked out that these women were um, sex workers. And then eventually I realized, you know, I need to be on the streets. I need to find this, these men. And so sex work became a part of my life. And thankfully it did, because some of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned in life have been as a result of sex work. And of course, I worked out very quickly that a lot of these gorgeous men were often either drug peddlers or they were receiving drugs from these trans women. And I think there, there became a point where being a sex worker turned trying to get others off the street because it's not something that you can maintain over a long period of time. And it's a very hard form of work to be involved in and it takes a toll on you mentally and physically. But many trans people have no other option. We're always just one mishap away from the street, that's the way I see it. And it's still evident today that trans people still find it very difficult to become employed. This led Felicia to embark on the next leg of her journey. Community work became my thing and I got employed to do community work. With the tenacity and drive of a true survivor, she became the best at it. You know, just a small community practitioner and work has taken me right through to the United Nations, both in New York and Geneva, multiple times, and supporting and working and lobbying with many other trans and LGBTQIA plus rainbow activists all over the world to ensure that our rights are not diminished and trans people too are worthy of becoming homeowners, business owners, mm. academics, scientists, mothers, fathers, and that they can be loved during that whole process of aspiration. So yeah, it's, it's very rewarding. Her work with communities has taught her how crucial support for trans people is no matter how old they are. Some people transition in their 50s and 60s and their 70s, so it's important to recognise that family is integral and important, that people around them journey with them, whether they're taking time to understand whether they feel like they've lost something. And I think it's important to, to grieve the loss of that person that they, that person, but to move on. <laughs> It's that cycle of some people feel they've lost something, but they don't stay grounded in the fact that they're gaining also. Yeah. What makes you hopeful for the future? We live longer lives. That if you are a trans woman and you want to be a mother, be a mother. If you want to be a trans woman and you want to be in love with another woman, whether she be a cis woman or a lesbian, fall in love with a woman. Whether you're a trans woman and you fall in love with a gay man and he loves you back, do it. If you want to be a trans woman and to be the first prime minister of this country, do it. <laughs> <laughs>